We're doing baby dedication this morning. Uh, a little rattled. That song was good too. It's called Rattled. Um, so this morning we do baby dedication, and, and it's going to be a little bit different than we normally done it. So families, make sure you guys are on the same page. Um, normally we would call all the families up, and it's kind of cool because everybody's up here. And typically about two people in, like three of the kids are crying already. They're like, why are we here? And so we're going to do it a little bit different that helps us with both COVID stuff, but also just makes more logical sense. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little short sermon kind of explaining why we're doing what we're doing. And then we're going to call the families up one at a time. And so that's the plan, and then at the end of that, Will is going to come up, and we're going to do our responsive reading, um, and then we'll close and worship and go from there. Make sense? Yep. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, we are dedicating our children. And so for a lot of us, when we show up to these events, it, it feels very passive. So you're just going to show up and you're going to watch a show. But I want to remind you guys today that this is actually a very active event. By showing up, you said something. And you said, I want to support you as a family. And so similar to weddings, you know, weddings, we show up to these weddings and we're just like, I hope supper's good. But showing up to a wedding was supposed to be you signaling to the couple that for the rest of your life, you're going to have a community around you. By showing up this morning, by watching online, you're saying to these families, hey, listen, we're going to come, we're going to walk alongside you. And so there's three different groups of people I want to talk to this morning. The first, we're going to talk about the parents and what you're saying. The second, we're going to talk about the close family and friends. And then the third, there's an entire role that we as a congregation play that is essential. So parents, when I, when I think of, of baby dedications, uh, my mind always goes to 1 Samuel 1. And I, I don't know if there's a different place where this originally started, but it's the birth of Samuel. So I want to read that with you guys. If you guys have your Bibles, go to 1 Samuel. Uh, we're going to start from verse 1 and then read from there. So... There was a certain man, man from Ramatham, a, Zephu, a Zephite, uh, from the hill country of Ephraim. Um, it'll get smoother once the name's finished, so just everybody relax. Whose name was Elkanah, son of Jerome, Jerome, the son of Elihu, the son of Tahu, the son of Zuf, and the son of Ephraimite. And so for those of you guys who are pregnant, just some name options. <laughs> Um, you guys are always looking for creative names. I feel like the Old Testament has tons, right? Like everybody's always like, I want a Bible name, Matthew. Have you ever thought of Ephraimite? Guaranteed there's not two of those in this school. You're welcome. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other uh, Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phineas, the two sons of Eli, were priests to the Lord. Whenever he came to town, whenever he came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat for his wife Peninnah, my goodness, Peninnah, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her to ir in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and could not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? And so it's a situation that she's going through that some of you guys have faced. And Hannah's going through an incredibly, and, and, and it's hard now, and back then it was, it was is, I'm not saying harder, but viewed different and, and maybe more difficult as a cultural, because you weren't passing on your genetics. Your life almost didn't matter as much. Having kids was a huge deal. And so for Hannah, she's in this place where, you know, she wants to have kids, but God closed her womb, and it's incredibly difficult. And it says, once when they were finished eating and drinking at Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put the wine away. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. 
I have not been drinking wine or beer. I have been pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and they went back to their hometown of Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. When her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him to the Lord and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband said to her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord. As surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord there. And so there's a lot in that story, and for some of that, that connects so personally with your own struggle. As parents, uh, for us at least, and and maybe guys, you guys are more like me, I, I didn't grasp the pain of not being able to have a child. I didn't grasp the pain of miscarriage. I, I couldn't, as a young you know, teenager and young adult, when you'd hear those things, I, I couldn't grasp that. And when we, we tried to have a child, then, then it, it worked, and, and we had Aiden, and then Colby, and then it just wouldn't stop. <laughs> but I remember talking to someone who was going through that, and, and they wanted a child so incredibly bad. And I remember them saying, sometimes I see parents and they say things like, like that, that, you know, these child, children are so hard or, hey, you want them for a weekend. And, and they say it so flippantly. And they just said, if only they could feel what we feel. And I think as parents, one of the big things today that we, we, we need to remind ourselves is what a gift it is to be a parent. There are those who have prayed their entire lives the way Hannah did and never been able to have a child. And I think sometimes as life goes on, because life gets hard, it just does. And I think sometimes we end up forgetting this, and I think of the words of Hannah here and her pleading with God. And so if you're a parent here this morning, I think maybe one of the things I want to ask of you is just to stop and say, thanks God, for the privilege of being a mom or a dad. The second thing I want to say to parents is, one of, the, one of the things that I really think young parents as you guys are coming up here to dedicate your child, I think really what you're in essence doing is you're giving up control. And the dedication to God really isn't the same way as it is to Hannah. You guys didn't come to the church to say, I'm going to leave my children here, <laughs> raise them. And none of you brought a bull, which I also think is, would be cool if you guys brought calves that we could slaughter for, you know, for us to eat. That'd be great. Just an option, throwing that out there. But what you're really saying is, God, I, I want to surrender control because what happens is that as this child grows older, the temptation is to cling closely to the vision we have for our children. To cling on to what I want my child to be instead of to allow God to create this child to be what he created this child to be. And we end up living vicariously through our children instead of actually just allowing our children to be who God created them to be. I think the act of walking up here into dedicating your child is to say, God, there's a couple of things. The one is, I want to give this child to you because I understand he's yours. She's yours. But secondly, I want to commit to doing my part. I am a parent to this child. 
understanding that this child belongs to you. Understanding that this child was created by you. That this child will also call you father. And so when you come up here, you're saying, God, I want to give my life over to you and I want to dedicate my child to you. Then on the flip side, many of you guys have been that little child up here. You don't remember, but you were up here. And so in the same way that the parents had to come up here and they said, I'm going to make a choice to dedicate myself as well. You, as you become youth and young adults, you're going to have to make the same decision. Will you now too dedicate your life? And one of the challenges I want to give to you as youth and young adults this morning, or to those of you guys who are watching who have never given your life to God, to ask the question, when? When will you release control and allow God to work in you the way he desires? Right up here, parents are going to do their part. And they're going to spend the next couple of years doing the very best they can. And if you're a normal child, you will, I'm sure, let your parents know multiple times how they could be better. But just know that they are trying. And then in 20 years, once you have your own children, you'll walk up to your parents and go, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know how much I hurt you. Right? I've had to do this with my own parents. Because apparently some of my kids are like me. And so then when I get frustrated with my children, I often think to myself, I should... I'm going to punish my child and then go apologize to my mother. Because <laughs> now I'm feeling the pain that you went through, right? Uh, it's a little thing. So Aiden and Colby and Dylan, they all do this thing where, uh, this is completely off topic, it's free, it's just a story. So they, 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 we have uh, headers in our house, right? And every header that they see, they feel they need to slap. And so they're training themselves to jump. <laughs> it's so stinking annoying. <laughs> but you know who did that 30 years ago? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> And I remember that. I was working on my volleyball game. Come on, Mom. Can I have a dream? I'm learning to serve, right? Yeah. It's funny being a parent, right? As a child, you look at your parents and you go, what is wrong with you? And then as a parent, you look at yourself and go, what was wrong with me? Right? It's a great circle of life. It's beautiful. But kids, you guys have to make that choice too. Your parents cannot make this choice for you. And the beauty of the, what we're doing today is this is, not a, this is not making a decision for a child. This is a parent saying, I'm making a decision for myself and I'm offering my child up. But that child, as they grow, is going to have to make their own decision. Are you also going to follow God? Are you also going to dedicate your life? And my hope and prayer is that you do. Close friends and family. What I have learned in my many years of being a parent now, is that it is very hard to do alone. And I think our culture has bred this idea that family is a unit of mom and dad and children, and everybody else outside of that doesn't get a say. And I just think we as Christians, we need to rebuke that and go, no, no, no. Children are raised within the context of extended family and friends. And the parents around you, the parents that are coming up here today, they're going to need you. Now, they're not going to need everybody. <laughs> so, you know, Brandon and Jen come up here, and next week there's like 50 people being like, I got some advice for you. Right? We're not looking for everybody, okay? But those of you that are close family and close friends, it is your duty to be a part and to walk alongside these families. God did not design us to do this alone. God designed us to do this together. This is one of the biggest blessings of church family, is that we come together and we say, listen, you're not alone. And whatever your struggle is, you're not alone. Congregation. So for those of you that aren't close family and friends, you don't need to criticize parenting, okay? <laughs> no parent is laughing at that joke, because everybody's had that happen. But anyways, I want to go back to the Sermon on the Mount. Your job and the opportunity that we have as a church is to be light and salt. Who's going to teach this child what it means to be resilient in a marriage? Who's going to teach this child what it means to be kind when confronted with chaos? Who's going to teach this child what it means to be a follower of Jesus? Mom and dad are going to do their part. Families are going to do some of their part. But the majority of what children see when they grow up is they're going to look around. And they're going to get to know you guys. And they're going to get to see your lives. So every time you walk up here and you share your story, you're being light. 
Every time you see a teenager or a kid or a parent struggling and you go encourage them, you're being salt. So for those of us on the outside, we get to model what this looks like. And we get to give hope and we get to inspire the next generation. I think it's one of the beauties of raising kids in the church. You know, my kids have been so blessed by so many of you guys sharing your stories and investing in them. I love that about church. So today as these families come up and they dedicate, just know that you all have a part. Encouragement. Offer hope. Pray for them. Pray with them. Bring a meal. Let's get through this together. So, with that, um, I, I want to explain a little bit of the process of what we're doing, and then we're going to start calling the families up. Um, what we've done is, so each family is going to come up, and they've picked somebody to anoint them. And so basically what that means is that we're going to walk over. Uh, for those of you guys who are, are the anointers, the Bibles are over here. The oil is there. Um, you're going to walk up. Uh, one of you guys grab the baby, or if you're multitasked, you just grab the baby and do everything. I can't, so Josie's going to grab the babies because, yeah, we don't want to drop a child. I, I can see that being really detrimental. I was dropped, so I'm just throwing that out there if that's... <laughs> um, so they're going to come up, and they're going to put a little bit of oil on the person's forehead. They're going to say something encouraging, and they're going to pray over them. And I don't want to over-spiritualize this. The oil is symbolic. It's something we see done throughout Scripture, and it's something that really allows us to have a physical representation of what we're doing. Like when you get married, the ring doesn't define whether you're married or not. It's, just, it's a representation. It's something that reminds you. And so in the same way, so don't get, if you're not used to the whole oil thing, don't get freaked out by it. It's just us doing something that we think is a little physical representation. Um, so there's a mic there for you guys, um, and I think that's all you need for um, intro. So uh, Josie and I get to do the first two. So Josie, why don't you come on up? Uh, and the first family is Brandon and Jen, and we are going to dedicate Blakely. All right, so one of the things that's cool about these kind of dedications is that for me, you guys are still teenagers. <laughs> and so one of the things that, and Trevor's not there yet, but Patrick's understanding what I'm saying. When, when you see these kids come through youth, sometimes they don't, in your head, they, don't, they, they haven't actually grown up. But in real life, you guys are what, like 18 at least? <laughs> at least? And so it's really cool. So it's really an honor for us um, to be able to do this for you. So do you want to, yeah, I want to swap. <laughs> That's okay. And it doesn't have to happen. My children cried even when I held them, so it was fine. It was cool. <laughs> That's why I say it's for the parents, right? You know, we should have treats. We should have a little. Anyway, sorry. Um, so, guys, um, just wanted to say I'm really proud of who you guys have become, who you guys are, the mom and dad that you guys are, and, and just how you guys are modeling this and, and raising your kids. Really proud of you guys. So, we're honored to do this. So. If you're wondering, she gets that from Jen. <laughs> Her attitude. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. God, thank you for the way you've blessed Brandon and Jen. Thank you for the people they are. Thank you for the way they live out their faith. Thank you for the way they love on and care for people. Thank you for the kids that you've placed in their lives. And I just pray for Blakely. I pray, God, that you will do what you've promised. That you will guide and lead God, we believe that she was created by you, that she is known by you, that she is loved by you. And so, Father, as she grows, I just pray that you will continue to move in her. I pray that you'll continue to give Brandon and Jen wisdom and guidance as they parent and as they navigate that. And, Father, we anticipate great things. We love you. Amen. Awesome, guys. All right. So now, Melissa, Hoover, and Benson, you guys want to come up? 
Uh, I want to make a little side note. Uh, I, I did clarify where Jude was this morning. Uh, so Jude is a part of our armed forces and is off on a training regiment. And so thank you, Jude, for your service. Um, and so, just in case people are wondering, just want to clarify, right? You know, right. All right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, this, is, this was part of the issue with COVID taking an extra year. See, much younger, they're, they're still nice to us. Likely, I will remember, just so you know. Hi. <laughs> He's like, what is happening? My tick, no piss. Father God, thank you so much for Benson. Thank you, God, for the way you've created him. Thank you for his safe arrival. Thank you for placing him with Melissa and Jude. Thank you, God, for the parents they are. Thank you, God, for the way they've strived to seek after you and strive to make a family for their kids. And God, thank you for the way you've created Benson unique. Thank you, God, for the way you've created him exactly for what you have designed for him. And so God, as he grows, as he's a baby child with his siblings, I pray, God, that he will bring much joy to this family. I pray, God, that you will continue to um, raise him. I pray that you continue to move in him. And then be with Jude and Melissa. Father, as they go through the stage of young kids, I pray, God, that you'll give them extra energy. I pray, God, that you'll give them discernment as to how to parent, give them grace. And then, Father, we look forward to seeing what you're going to do through this family. Thank you, God, that you've brought them into our community. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping alongside them. We love you, Lord. Amen. Do you want to take that? All right. Then, um, next is um, Bernie and Tammy with Brindley, and they have asked uh, Nana and Papa to do that for them. So why don't you guys come on up? I guess I should say Nana and Papa are Ben and Justina Thiessen. You guys probably don't all call them Nana and Papa, I guess. Yeah, I was uh, just thinking of the last song that we were singing there, and God has done an amazing thing right here. We see that right here, right now. And we are so glad to, to do this for Brindley and for Tammy and Bernie. And we are so glad that we can see how beautiful God's plan is for families. In Psalm 139, we find it that you made me beautiful you made me exactly what you wanted me to be. You knit me together in your mother's womb. You knew me. You have counted my days. They're right there in his book. He knows exactly how long it's going to be here on this earth. And we just want to bless your mom and dad, and we want to bless you. And Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we just want to pray for them. We want to pray for them, we want to uplift them before your throne. And Father, we realize that it's not always easy as parents. We re realize that it, it brings a lot of sleepless nights and it's, it's, it's sometimes hard. But Father, we heard in the songs today so clearly how strong you are and how willing you are to be right there for us when we need you. Right now, we want to ask that you would help Brindley to grow up to become the woman that she, you, you intended her to be. We want to pray and we want to ask that you would protect her from the evil one. With your Holy Spirit, 
protect her, guide her, and lead her, and direct her, so that she will be able to follow you and return and serve you as you intended her to do. Lord, we pray for Bernie and Tammy. We ask for extra strength in training up this child for you, and that you would give them the courage and the strength and the blessing to do this for your honor and your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, next we have Tim and Pam Thiessen. Why don't you guys come on up with the twins? <laughs> you guys say they cry a lot. I don't see it, Tim. They look pretty calm to me. Good night. <laughs> Again, what a beautiful double blessing. Yeah, so awesome. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? Thankfully, they look like their mother. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> we are so thankful to do this for you guys. Hi, buddy. How are you? Hi. You want to laugh? This one guy, he laughed yesterday so hard. I just had so much fun with him. <laughs> Look at the gift that God gave you, Tim and Pam. I know it's not always easy. I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of sleepless nights. But God says, I'm going to be there for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will help you through it, and he will. Stand on his promises, stand strong. And we praise you and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for Quentin and for Zachary, for the way you created them, the way you knit them together in the secret place. How beautiful, how beautiful is it? Such a beautiful child. I just want to ask that you would also overshadow them with your Holy Spirit when the evil one tries to destroy and to kill. I pray that you would even protect the parents when the evil one wants to step in and wants to, to, to discourage them. I ask for that you would help Pam and Tim to stand strong. And when they need help and where, when there's help, offered, let them willingly take that and accept that. We want to stand with them. We want to be with them. And we want to help them carry their load. Because this is a double load. And we know that. It's been very hard for them sometimes. And we just praise you and thank you for these children. And I ask that you would help them to grow up to become the man that you want them to be. Thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful promise to be with us until the end. Amen. Hey, buddy. All right, next up we have John and Helena Reimer. And I believe Peter and Jamie, you guys are going to come up. That is a little stud right there, tell you what. Making me look bad, kid. Come on now. <laughs> 
God, I just want to bring Marcus in before you and John and Helena and Melina. And I just want to thank you for them. And I pray that Marcus would grow up and learn to walk and talk with you. And I pray us as a as his family and church around him that will surround him with love in the hard times and the good times. And yeah, I just pray that you would bless him with a long, healthy life. And, uh, and he brings a lot of joy to us already. And I pray that you'd turn him into a little MLB player. Because he's already shown some pretty good promise there. And yeah, I just want to thank you so much for him. And I pray that you would uh, learn to always walk in your presence and that you'll surround him with love. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I just want to thank you for this beautiful family up here, God, and uh, just uh, thank you so much for Melina and the uh, bundle of joy that she is. Um, I just pray that as she uh, grows up, Lord, that you would just uh, surround her with your love and grace, God, and uh, that she would know that you're uh, always there for her, uh, for whatever she needs, God. And I just thank you for Melina and John and the great job that they're doing as uh, parents, Lord, and I just... Uh, Pray that you would continue to guide them, um, show them the way, and uh, just give them the strength and uh, wisdom as they uh, raise their beautiful little family, God. And I just, uh, yeah, I just pray that you would uh, continue to bless them and uh, walk with them, Lord. Pray this in your name, Amen. Hi. I'm gonna keep her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then last for today, and certainly not least, um, Chris and Eric, why don't you guys come on up? Um, Will and Annie are going to be doing the dedication for them, uh, and then after that, Will is going to read us, lead us in a responsive reading. So. It is a real um, joy that we get to do life with you and that you entrust um, your children to us in this sort of way. Um, I just want to give you guys the blessing. Samuel Eric Thiessen, our Father, your Creator, knows knows you by name. I pray that you would grow up to know his name his holy and good name. May the Lord grant you the fullness of his presence. May your dad and your mom be granted the wisdom and the courage and the strength to raise you up to be everything that God had created you to be. May God grant you a long and full life. May you be granted the grace to bury your parents at an old, old age. May the love of the Father, the righteousness of Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be an ever-present reality all the days of your life. Amen.
this is the part where you guys get to participate. If um, you haven't in the past, um, it's been two years now, Albert. I'm not wearing my glass, so I can't see where it is. So it's been a while, and there's some of you that have never done this before. So you guys get to uh, participate in a responsive reading. Basically, it's going to be a series of uh, sentences and statements that I'll make, and there will be a spot where you guys just respond. And uh, I think this is an important um, uh, part of the ceremony. We're not very good. It's what Albert mentioned a little bit about symbol. It's, not, it's more than a symbol. Uh, Reenacting God's desire for us through symbols, even coming together is a symbol. And uh, in, in a culture that is obsessed with the individual and individual freedom, coming together and doing baby dedications in public, doing weddings in public, uh, and doing baptism in public does not make a whole lot of sense because one of the biblical values that's equal and a complement to individual freedom is the value of unity. And that's what we do when we read together, when we raise our voices together. When we cry out to God together, there is power in that symbol. It is not magic, no more magic than the oil, but there is power in the symbol. And so I invite you guys to stand up as we publicly confess that the physical shelter of God's love is the church. And so, of course, the gathering of the church is incredibly essential, but it is not just for our own sake. It is for the sake of glorifying God. And so let us make this vow that the children are a gift. Children are a gift. Don't ever come under the illusion as parents that they are yours to control. You will find out very quickly children are very hard to control. We can influence, we can guide, we can teach, but we do not direct their destiny. It is a vow by the parents to commit to raising the children uh, in the context of God's shelter, which is the church. And of course, it is the vow made by the church that we are extended family, that the best way to raise a child is in community, and that with our gifts, talents, uh, and whatever uh, things we have in life, we contribute to their spiritual need and their physical need, that no one ever gets left in need. And so that's what we're doing this morning. And so uh, let us begin. I hope it's self-explanatory, and I hope the uh, slides correspond with the reading, not like last time. Let's begin. Lord, these tiny hands are so trusting. They are innocent, and yet they will grow in a world that has been tainted by hatred, greed, sin, and darkness. Lord, especially in these days, the future seems so uncertain, and yet, when we gaze upon the face of new life of these little ones, somehow we have hope. As parents, spiritual leaders, teachers, mentors, and friends, Lord, anoint us with the ability to give these young ones an overwhelming sense of security that can only come from you. When they are hurting. When they fail. Lord, when they are lonely. Father, you are the giver and meaning, the giver of life and meaning. Jesus, you are our righteousness. Holy Spirit, you are our comfort and wisdom. You are Yahweh, Shalom, the Lord of Peace. Let us bow our eyes and heads for prayer. Lord, we pray that you shepherd these families, 
that they will not be left in need. Lord, make them to lie down in green pastures. May you lead them beside still waters. Restore their soul when they feel empty. May you lead them into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yes, even though they at times will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, may they never fear evil knowing you are with them. May your rod and your staff be a comfort for them. May you prepare a table before them in the presence of their enemies. May you anoint their heads with oil. May their cups run over. May goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their lives. And we pray that each one chooses the inheritance that you have for them and dwells in your house forever. Amen.